hello as per the people's request i am back for another video to talk to you about more college stuff to give you some more college info some college insider if you will from the college student herself janae um today i'm going to be showing you my portfolio that i use when i apply to usc um so yes i currently go to usc and i study architecture um this portfolio i also use in other um Articles I applied to Parsons, which I got accepted to, and Pratt, and also SCAD and Drexel University, all for architecture. And so I'm going to show you what my architecture portfolio looked like, or my art portfolio that got me accepted to architecture school. All the same items in this portfolio I applied, um, I used to apply to um, all the other art schools I just listed, but my focus is going to be on my application to USC. So along with the um, art pieces that I have in this portfolio, I'm also going to share with you my supplemental um, essays or what else I had to fill um, in for the portfolio section of my application. So just some background information on applying to um, USC architecture. So we had to so we had to complete a slide room um, portfolio um, with 16 items in it. We had one supplemental essay. I think it was like 300 words. I'm not exactly sure um, on a prompt, which I will read for you at the end. And then we had like one or two questions and also we had to um, give a description for each of our images on what we learned from that piece. Also, another thing, if you are planning to apply for architecture, let me just tell you this right now because no one told me, they are not expecting you to have architecture work. The whole reason you're going to college for architecture is so you can learn the trade. They don't expect you to go to school knowing everything. So um, don't think that you have to put in architectural drawings and plans and models and stuff um, because in high school, most people just don't haven't learned that and I did not learn that as well um so I don't have any architectural stuff like that in my portfolio but I wish that there was someone there just to calm me down and tell me that you know homegirl you don't know architecture yet so you don't have to put that in your portfolio because you don't have it and whatnot so just saying that I did AP 3D art and also AP um drawing art I will explain this as I go through my portfolio so enough of this background information let me just show you my pieces one time one time for the people one time let me give it to y'all let me give it to you let me give it to you 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 who I... jumping right in this first piece that i have is called leaves um it's a chair made out of leaves and it was part of my AP 3D art portfolio. Um, let me just say the concentration for my AP 3D art portfolio was chairs. So these first couple images you're gonna see are all chairs. Do you see? I got a four in that portfolio, and you know what? I'll take it. I will take it. And the description I gave for this one on where I learned from it was. Um, this is what I said. This is the first piece I completed for the concentration of my AP 3D art portfolio with the theme of chair. It was from this first chair that I learned about the balance needed, needed in order to make my pieces stand. I chose this piece because it shows a growth when compared to the other pieces in this concentration as I was able to build off this first design to experiment with shape more as I began to understand balance. So yes, with each piece we had to talk about what we learned from it and also why we decided to include it in our portfolio submission. This next piece is also a chair. It's called egg cartons because it was a chair made out of egg cartons. So creative, very creative. And for this one I said, this piece was part of my concentration for my AP 3D portfolio. I learned the importance of creating a design that complements the material I am working with. When I was handed this material to create a piece for my concentration, rather than, rather than just putting it together to make a chair, I wanted to use it to create a pattern or design that I could make the chair from. I chose this piece because of how I was able to use the material to make this design. This is my chair made out of egg cartons. It's cute if you ask me. It's not as cute as the leaves. The leaves definitely my favorite out of the chair. I'm not sure. Moving on to the uh, next chair. This one's called Tag because it was made out of 
tags. Um, it was made out of sticks and also yarn tags. I don't know if you've ever bought like cut pieces of yarn. I don't, I mean, there's another piece of my portfolio that I used cut yarn for, you'll see it. And they had these little tags that had the name on it and I made this chair tally out of that. Honestly, this was like coming to the end of like the semester and I just needed to push out another piece for um before I submitted my portfolio, so that's that. I said this piece taught me about taking advantage of the resources around me. I chose this piece because it was made from a unique material which makes the piece quite unique in itself. Interesting. So the next chair, <laughs> it's called Boxes. Yes, because it was made out of jewelry boxes. This piece helped me understand the balance of asymmetry and the... Ooh, wow. Wow. <laughs> that sounds so fancy. Okay, this piece helped me understand the balance of asymmetry and that a piece does not have to be symmetrical. Amen. I chose this piece because of the approach I took toward it. I wanted to give it a modern style. I believe it is important to understand the trends of the current era, not necessarily follow them, but notice them in order to build from them. Is that really what I said? Hmm. Anyways. That's my chair, boxes. This one was actually quite big. This one was really cute, actually. It was really nice. It looked like a transformer. It was really cool. <laughs> All these chairs, now that I'm looking back at it, it's pretty interesting. Who was I? Anyways, it's art. It's not what it is. It's what you interpret it to be. Oh, amen. The next chair, tape this chair okay this is my favorite chair this is the best chair that i made out of all the 12 chairs that i made how much chairs did i make for my portfolio it was made out of masking tape and chicken wire from completing this piece i learned how design can compromise functionality i had to revise my original de design several times in order to accommodate for it being functional going back to my first piece of my concentration i had to implement what i learned about balance in order to complete this piece i chose this piece because i was proud of how it turned out despite all the changes i had to make to it Oof. It also turned out to be one of the strongest pieces in my concentration of my 3D portfolio. Yes, this was one of my stronger pieces. Um, obviously not strong enough to give me a five, but I'd like the four, as I said. College credit, baby. I really love this piece. All I'm gonna say is that when you're submitting photos for your portfolio, the piece is irrelevant. It's the photo you take of the piece. Because if you look at this piece in real life, it ain't all that. It's not all that. But this photo I took of this piece, this photo came out really good. And that's why I love this piece because the photo came out so good. And a discussion. These two next photos in my portfolio are not of the chairs. We moved past this. But it's more pieces of my 3D portfolio. This next one is called Chain Mail. Um, this is made from mesh wire and I wrapped it around several times on a mannequin that was in the art room. I said, completing this piece taught me about depth. I had to pay attention to making this piece have a, the perception of depth in order for it to qualify as a 3D piece. I chose this piece because with the light shining on it, it allowed you to see its depth and it came out as a strong piece. Yeah, so that's chain mail. Um, in person, this piece actually looked really cool. So I like this piece a lot. I did. Okay, next. This next piece called Tri Palm. This photo is a horrible photo. Um, we took no good photos of this, but it was a nice piece in person. And that's what matters. The personality was on the inside, not the outside. Everybody knows that. So this was a big piece. Um, it was made from wire and it was made from yard. Also part of my AP 3D portfolio. While completing this project, I learned a skill I will never forget. Patience. I had to create each pom-pom on this installation by hand, which took me months to do. I had tried to put what I had already created together even though I had not finished. This, however, only prolonged the entire process of finishing this piece. I chose this piece because it was the biggest one I had made and I also enjoyed the pop of color it gave. The size of the piece was 70 inches by 55 inches by 24 inches. This piece was very big, very heavy, a hassle. 
um, a pain in the booty. It was not easy, but um, came out cute in the end. And well, yeah, so that's all the pieces I, all the pieces from my 3D portfolio that I included in here. This is now coming to drawing. This first piece, bug eyed. I got a lot of comments on this because a lot of people in general told me, why did I submit this? Because it wasn't done. I mean, it was finished to me. I said, Shh, I'm done. The beast was finished actually. Like, they're acting where's the hair. I did not plan to draw hair. Um, I guess if you stare at it long enough, it looks like it's not done. But to me, it was done. It was from this, from creating this piece that I learned how to spot the different colors that made up one major color and how to capture light in a drawing. It was also my first time understanding the uses of undertones. I chose this piece because it was my first time experimenting with colored pencils on a portrait and it made me realize how much I enjoyed working with this medium. Oh yeah, I remember. So in the height of my um, the completion of my 3D AP 3D portfolio, I got tired. I got fed up. Why? Why did I have to keep putting things together? Why did I have to 3D stuff? I was done. I was ready to draw again. So what I decided to do? I decided to just drop everything and draw. Moving on. So next is Dino School. Um, this was in the beginning of my AP um, drawing portfolio. All of these um, pictures are from my breath, not from my concentration. So this first piece, Dino School. Um, this was like made during the fall, like close to when my application for USC was due. It's just a color pencil drawing of, um, it was perspective. We chose an area in school and then we had to like, judge it up with like a theme. And I chose dinosaurs because I love dinosaurs. This is the first piece I completed for my AP art drawing portfolio. I learned to nurture my creativity while doing this piece. I chose this piece because it shows the usage of the drawing skills I have learned up to this point. I had to think about composition, shadowing, undertones, and mixing of colors, and also my voice. I think a lot, I don't know what I was writing when I was writing these, but I remember filling up this application and just hopping from one to the next and back and forth because I did not know what to write. Obviously, I did not know what to write. Next one is called Zinc. A self portrait. So I completed this one while at a summer program, um, SCAD Rising Star. I don't know if you've heard about it, but really liked it. So this one, this piece is made from water soluble graphite. Don't know if you've heard about that, but it was a hassle. Everything is a hassle to me. Dang. Positivity. This piece took a little while to make, but. Actually, it did not take long to make. The medium I decided to use for this piece was not the easiest. However, I rose up to the challenge and I did it. I chose this piece because it was the first still life that I had put together for myself. It made me learn a lot about the importance of composition. When I completed this piece, I had not had a lot of experience with graphite or watercolor. So it was difficult at first as I used water soluble graphite. From this, I also learned skills associated with these mediums. Okay, next piece. This is my favorite piece that I have ever made in my entire life. This piece is so beautiful to me. First of all, it's called Duck. Um, find the duck and you'll see why it's called Duck. Um, so I also did this. Um, this is still life that I did when I was also at SCAD um, Rising Star. This piece is also big it's really big and it's completely done in pencil i was so proud of myself for this piece like i didn't even know i could draw <laughs> okay anyways this is my favorite piece so this is my second time putting together a still life to draw however this was the first piece i had ever created entirely in graphite this piece taught me a lot about shadows and range of values I had to go over areas several times to ensure that I had a proper range of values that accurately showed the shadows. I chose this piece to show the skills that I learned. I'm pretty straightforward with that description. All right. And the last piece that I submitted for this portfolio, it's called Chanel. Um, 
This was actually what the piece that I did for my Parsons um, challenge. Let me talk about the process of it. I think it was pretty cool. Let me not waste this time with you. So basically what I did, I took a picture of my friend, I put it on Photoshop, I distorted it, and then I printed it out on these 100% cotton bed sheets, and then I painted over that distortion, and then I sewed on those sheets the proportionate, the silhouette of the proportioned um, original photo. And basically it was just supposed to show you how Photoshop in today's society messes with your head because you get used to the Photoshop images that the original images look weird. So after looking at this image that I've been painting for so long that was Photoshop, it looked normal. So when I looked at the original photo, it looked weird. This piece actually wasn't done because I was supposed to dye it, but I did not have enough time. Um, it was also part of my concentration for my AP drawing portfolio, so I didn't have to finish it right away. This piece taught me about adapting to challenges along the way. While completing this piece, I was faced with many setbacks as part of my work, experimenting with different techniques and media in order to bring it together. I chose to include this piece because of the approach I took to complete it. It was my first attempt at painting a face and I chose to experiment with facial proportions as well. It shows a depth in the way I am able to develop my ideas when completing work. Now for the supplemental part of the um, application. First, they, The first thing they ask is creative activities. Please list in order of oldest to current creative activities that have prepared you for the study of architecture. So when I think of uh, what you need to study architecture, you really just need, I guess, art and math. I mean, not that I put math, but um, so I listed that I did art. I did 2D design art, which was my freshman year of high school, advanced studio art, which was my sophomore year of high school, AP 3D art, junior year, and then I did an architecture internship um also my junior year so i put that in there and then i took a college drawing class and a college animation class which was at scad rising star hong kong summer program really loved it 10 out of 10 recommend um and then also finally my ap drawing art and that's what i listed as um, what would prepare me to study architecture. And now this big hunk of text. We had to do a 500 response, 500 word response to um, the question. As a future architect, who do you want to design or build for and why? What are some things about USC architecture that strike you as compelling and different from other architecture schools? And they also added, the admissions committee will view this supplement as a measure of your awareness, determination, and vision. Your response should be no more than 500 words in length and should give the committee a sense of how USC architecture will help fulfill your long-term goals and ambitions. So I'm going to read you uh, my 500 word essay. Please do not copyright me. Please don't steal my words because at the end of the day, there's only one me. There's only one you. Someone will catch on. There's something here is fishy. This doesn't sound like that person. That sounds like someone else. So for your own good, in fact, don't copy my work, please. So I said, everything is prone to change. The world is changing. Ideas and concepts are adapting new meanings and we are no longer the same. The reason we are changing is because we can be changed by things. A space can change a person. Walking into a space filled with natural light streaming through vast windows can have one effect on a person while an enclosed area with no light can have another. I see these changes in my own persona as I enter new places every day. In the right space, I feel happy, excited, energized, motivated, and ready to accomplish anything. As a future architect, I want the spaces I create to be the positive stimuli for others. Ooh, a stimuli. Mm -hmm. A hospital should make you feel healthy, not sick. An office should make you feel accomplished, not lazy. A house should make you feel comfortable, not tired. Our emotions can forever change. However, architecture must be stable, both literally and figuratively, as a buffer for the daily changes we experience. 
It is a marvel how architecture is timeless, being both modern and ancient at the same time. I want to create from skyscrapers to houses that fit in this theme of timelessness, kindling positive emotions in everyone that encounters them. The reason that USC Architecture can help me not only fulfill this goal of becoming an architect, but also help me thrive is because of three reasons, the people, the place, and the program. People make a place, a building can be built, a space created, however, it has no purpose without the people in it. The people at USC are diverse and the experience, experiences they share make USC an ideal environment for development. It is a place where everyone is motivated and push, push each other to be their best selves. This place is the next reason why USC will help me thrive. USC is located in the heart of Los Angeles, a city on a hill in terms of innovative architecture. Los Angeles is a city that is still being built, meaning while at USC, I will be a witness to constant modern change. This will play an important role in my studies as observation is crucial to the field I want to go into. The prestigious architecture program at USC would then take all these experiences, experiences and nurture them to send me in the right direction. I can only get so far on my own. USC is the push that I can ensure will shape me into the architect I want to become. Not many schools can offer growth from their people, place, and program. However, USC does and can continue to even in a changing day. So that completes my art portfolio that got me accepted into architecture school. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed because I enjoyed. I appreciate the recommendation I got from um, two people who asked me to do this because um, I didn't even think about this. This is smart. Smart. So um, if you have any other video recommendations, I am here to help you. Once again, thank you for tuning in and watching this video on this beautiful Nay Day. Um, subscribe for more content. If you have more questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or message me directly on Instagram. Hmm? Instagram. This is my Instagram in the description below.